Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here at my next uh, Legend of Korra news update and last ever speculation for Korra the show for K4412, uh, Day of the Colossus and K413 The Last Stand. So yeah, the big one. Last ever speculation on Korra. Um, did the same thing on the podcast uh, yesterday where we just gave our final podcast speculation on this. Um, we had some kind of things we thought was going to happen, but ultimately a lot of the stuff was just like, we really don't know, like, um, there's a few things maybe you can really predict, but th you don't really know for the most part what it is. But we'll get to the speculation very, very quickly, just some tiny bits of news to talk about. Um, first one, Book 4 Balance DVD is coming out March 10th, 2015, that's according to Best Buy, their online site, as well as Amazon.com, they both have it listed for December 10th. Blu-ray and DVD, obviously, no cover re released or extras. We just noticed the Book 4 Balance DVD. So, there's that. Not much else to really say on it until we get more details. But I'm very interested to see what the cover is like. Um, other piece of news. Um, Nickelodeon on Twitter uh, mentioned to some people that maybe they're going to see if they can try and release the last two episodes at midnight Eastern Time rather than the usual kind of around noon eastern time because it obviously is the final episode get it out the second friday starts rather than rather than waiting half the day now obviously this if this happens it probably doesn't suit me the best because that means it's airing initially at like 5 a.m uh and stuff like that so if that happens i am going to be watching it because obviously it's core i'm going to stay up and watch that uh, if that happens, it means that I won't be able to record live reaction videos to the episodes, if that happens. But I will still be doing reviews, so... Obviously, it's not confirmed yet that that's happening. I, I will do videos later on in the week to kind of confirm the time thing with that. But, um... Basically, it's like, live, vi live reaction videos to the episodes will happen if it's at the usual time, not if it's at uh, midnight, basically. Uh, final thing, just a site piece of news, Avatar The Last Airbender Online.com. Every book of Korra, when it comes to an end, we do these. It's the Legend of Korra Awards. We did them for book one, Air, book two, Spirits, and book three, Change. And of course, we're going to do them for book four, Balance. These awards will go live on the site. I'll, I'll, do, I'll have a video up on Friday as well, talking about these awards. Um... I'm probably going to be recording it on Thursday when I write up the post and just they'll both go live on Friday once the episodes are live. And yet, yeah, voting will be open for two weeks. Um, as far as I'm aware right now, it's going to be the exact same categories as book three because there hasn't really been any kind of new elements introduced that deserve a new award. So it's going to be very similar to the book three awards, just obviously for book four. Um, so yeah, as I said, they'll go live on Friday. Voting will be open for two weeks. After that, I'm going to count the awards. And then on that Sunday, once the awards are over, we'll do a podcast uh, where we announce the winners of these awards and discuss what we think is worthy and stuff like that. Maybe some point down the line, a couple of months from now, we'll do a complete series of awards or something like that. But right now, focus is on the Book 4 awards and what they're doing. So, yeah, they're coming up on Friday. So, yeah, let's get into some speculation on the Book 4 slash Chorus series finale. Um, for me, like, the big thing is just that I can't believe this show is coming to an end. It, it hasn't felt like four years since we first heard about this, but it has been four years, basically. We found out about this show happening in 2010, and now we're towards the end of 2014, going into 2015, and it's coming to an end. So it's been quite a journey, and the, the, I suppose the interesting thing is that, like, for like, nearly everyone in the fandom this is the first time we've been with the show throughout every period of it that with avatar i don't think anyone many fans out there were really like knew about this show heavily before it aired just because it was a completely new property uh, there wasn't the fan sites i don't think were there um covering this stuff when it was just being like uh, produced but with cora we knew the second that like this thing was confirmed we knew about it like we knew really early that core was happening and so it's been a really interesting experience to like be in the fandom throughout every single stage of core's production 
all of the books and stuff like that so it's been quite a journey um and almost like a journey where like you're more connected to this show than the original show because none of us could have been there before avatar but um yeah it's amazing like 52 episodes of Korra and it's ending on Friday you know we get the 51st and 52nd episode of the show to bring it to a close and you know it's, it's going to be emotional like uh, Tumblr fan sites everyone's going to be emotional about this especially if it's a really good conclusion to the series um, and I'm just excited to see fan reaction I'm just excited for the episodes myself as much as I'm kind of like oh I can't believe the show's coming to an end I'm excited to see the conclusion of book four. I'm excited to see how they end this show. Um, but yeah, let, let, let's get into some actual speculation on this thing. Um, we have a preview clip. It's just It basically just reveals everyone survived the big uh, cliffhanger ending to last week's episode. Uh, no one seems really injured. Maybe a few cuts and bruises, little burns, scrapes. For the most part, everyone's perfectly fighting fit apart from Batar who seemed to have been like knocked out maybe he fainted because of what happened we're not fully sure but the interesting thing from this clip is just that you know that we get is just that okay everyone survived that's that means everyone's going to be in play in the finale what's Batar up to now like he is arguably the most important character going into the finale right now just based on what we've seen already in that he has the potential if he sides with our heroes now that he's kind of betrayed by his fiance, to turn the tide of this battle, to give them the power to take down the Colossus. Because what way is he going to react? Is he going to instantly join Team Avatar now that he's been kind of uh, betrayed? Or is he going to kind of try and convince himself that there was a reason why Kuvira did this, that, oh, that, that there, there must have been some reason why she did this, that she definitely loves me, she she missed on purpose, uh, she purpose, purposefully didn't kill me, um, or, or something like that, and they're going to have to, like, slap it out of him and say, look, this shows that she doesn't care about you as much as you thought she did, that, um, that she was willing, she was willing to sacrifice you to take us out, and you have to help us take her down, and maybe, then you can understand why she did it and get the answers you want. I'd like something like that to happen. Um, but ultimately, you know, the big thing going into episode 12 especially is it's called Day of the Colossus. What is going to happen with that? How is the Colossus going to be taken down? Because one, one big question I have to ask is, is the thing made out of platinum or is it made out of a bendable metal? Most people assume... And I think it's basically canon now that, you know, the domes of Zaufu that have been, that were ordered to be taken down, that were mentioned a few times in the series, clearly the Colossus is made in part from them, in part from other metal, but is there any platinum in it? Or is this thing just completely metal bendable? We know at least some of the controls are able to be metal bent, because Kavira controls it via metal bending, but otherwise, you know, you question, like, if it's made of platinum, how is this thing going to get taken down? If it's, even if it's made out of completely bendable materials, how are metal benders going to get close enough to take it down? Is Kuvira going with the idea that it's so big that metal benders can, can't do enough damage before she can take them out? Um, because you start to ask yourself the question, okay, look at all our hero characters that we have able to fight this thing. How much damage can they do? We have a bunch of airbenders. We basically have an army of airbenders around. What can they do? Um, normal airbending attacks aren't going to do much much to this. Um, if they make a giant tornado between themselves, like the end of book three, maybe they can knock it down. That's a potential. Earthbenders on their own without metal bending or lava bending, maybe they can knock it over by like when it steps forward, they make a big kind of platform and it just falls back. Maybe they can do something like that. Um, Firebenders, um, I don't really see being able to do much. Maybe some lightning bending can do a lot of damage to it if they get close enough. But normal firebending, um, unless they have like, unless they do a like super hot continuous stream of firebending at this thing, I don't see them being able to do enough damage to it. Water bending, I can maybe see them doing something like that, where like they get it in between like some panel lines and stuff like that, freeze it, and they kind of like stop some of it from the inside. Because um, water obviously damages machinery and stuff like that. I can see some stuff happening there. Bolin's lava bending, I think, could be pretty effective. Maybe, like, um, 
he creates just this kind of landscape of lava when it steps onto it, like it, um, it maybe slips or falls. Um, I'm very interested to see, you can probably see <laughs> over there what one of my sister's cats has just done. Just jumped straight up onto my transformer shelf, making space for itself. So uh, that's interesting that that's happening in the background while I'm trying to speculate on the finale of Korra. But let's get back to this. Um, what on earth was I talking about before this colossus uh, destroyed Republic City? But um, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, how much damage they can do? Uh, Bolden's lava bending. Maybe you can step on it and melt the feet or something like that. Maybe the lava is hot enough to actually melt melt some of the metal bending, uh, melt some of the metal. Um, other than that, I really don't know. The only thing I can say is that maybe Korra in the Avatar state takes down the Colossus, and that drains her enough that she can't use the Avatar state anymore, leading to Episode Thirteen just being Korra versus Kavira one on one bending fight to end this end the series. That, to me, is what they have to do. The only other thing I can see them doing is that Team Avatar does the soccer plan on it. Take it down from the inside. They somehow get inside, like Bolin lava bends it open or something like that. Lin metal bends them in or something like that. Transformers falling everywhere, but okay. Um, and they take it down like that. But I'm not really sure. Um, next topic I want to bring up is just the idea of like what characters will die, if any. Um... We, I asked this question to everyone on the podcast yesterday. So myself and the three others, uh, Greg, Troy, and Kelly. None of us could just flat out say, this character's going to die for this reason. There were Any character we brought up, there was an explanation for why they could, they, they probably should live. Core is the main character. They won't do something that tragic to, to end the series. Um... Bolin and Opal are probably safe just because of their relationship, and I think you have to have Opal say I love you back to Bolin. Tharik and Julie are probably safe for similar reasons, because we still haven't had their relationship resolved. Um, I don't see them doing anything to Tenzin or his family, because Tenzin's already been through a lot, like last book. Um, Mako, there, there's probably still something that he has to do with Wu and stuff like that, so I don't see them maybe taking him out. Um, uh, and stuff like that. So you you're Lin again I'm not really sure. The one we maybe came to was like Su Yin, just because she is kind of Kuvira's like mentor. Kuvira's her protege. If like the apprentice killed the master prior to the final battle, that would make it all the more dramatic that kind of Korra is also there trying to kind of like avenge Su and like uh, do that. But um I, I don't know if they'll even bother killing anyone. And that leaves basically only like Batar Jr. and Kuvira on the kind of hit list because Kuvira's our villain. She's probably going to be defeated. How is she defeated? Does she go down in a big bending fight with Korra? Does Korra end up having to kill her? Does she somehow end up like killing herself like with the, the spirit vine weapon like explodes depending on where they battle? Um, or what um, and then Batar Jr. is an interesting one because there's still potential that like he 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 helps maybe take them to Colossus but when it comes down to the final fight between Korra and Kavira maybe Korra is about to kill Kavira and he jumps in front of her uh showing how much he loves her and this kind of like changes her and she's just defeated because of the sacrifice that he was willing to make despite the what she did to him that would be interesting if they did that but again it's hard to just pick this character's gonna die, and um, so I'm not really sure about that. Romances. Let's let's get this out of the way. The shipping, uh, Bolin and Opal. I think for sure what's gonna happen at some point is Opal returns the "I love you" to Bolin. I think that has to happen. Um, Varric and Julie. We the Varric's voice actor hinted during San Diego Comic Con this year that at some point we're gonna get his. Um, that at some point we're going to get Varric's backstory so I'm thinking that probably has to happen in the moment where him and Julie actually come together and as a couple because I think that's very much what they're hinting at Julie likes Rom uh, Varric romantically and when he finally comes to realize that he may talk about how he first met Julie 
And I think that's ultimately maybe going to be your maybe epilogue romance that comes together when at the end, like out of nowhere, he just suddenly like leans her over and kisses her or something like that. That that would be interesting. Um, the other one is obviously Cora. What are they going to do with the main character and the romance? Most people are assuming that it's either going to be Mako or Sami at the end. But, and a lot of people are also assuming that there's just nothing with Cora. Which I suppose basically leads into, you know, what's the final shot of the show, but I'll, I'll get to that next. Other romance, Jinora and Kai, for me, one thing that needs to happen in the finale is Jinora and Kai have to talk to each other and have a scene that shows their relationship right now. It's all. It was cool and all that they were next to each other and involved in the mission in the last episode, but they didn't say a word to each other. All we know about their relationship is that they like each other from book three, and that they're a couple now at the start, at the go like in the past three years, uh, and that they have a good long range relationship. But what do they actually like together as a couple? I really want to see that. Um, but yeah, that that's most of the romances, and then. You know, if I was to say Mako and Korra or Mako and Asami, I'd definitely go more for Mako and Korra being a couple. Just because, as I've said before, I don't think the breakup at the end of book two made a lot of sense. To me, all of book two is leading towards them getting back together and kind of getting past issues that they had during the first breakup. Uh, so when they just broke up again, it made no sense to me. And them getting back together after a few years and all the maturity and development that's happened makes sense. Um, I don't have any problem if they actually go for uh, Korra Sami, but for me, it would have come out of nowhere. It wouldn't have enough kind of setup for like this happening, but really, I don't have like an issue with it happening that much. Just apart from like, well, where did this come from? But okay, <laughs> that would that'd be my reaction to Korra Sami. Um, now, obviously, what's the final shot going to be? Avatar: The Last Airbender. What we had was. Aang and Katara finally kind of found out what they what each other meant to them and they kissed, pan up into the sky, the end, credit rolls and that's the end of the series and it worked because the romance has been set up throughout the whole book. Right now it doesn't seem like a romance is going to be how you end the book. The, the final shot I think has to involve Korra but if you look at the shots that they've already had it's kind of been like uh, Korra gives Lin her bending back Tenzin compliments uh, Korra on that she's now like Avatar Korra, close up on her face, pan up, end of book one. Book two, she gives the speech about how she's no longer the bridge and how she's always going to use Rafa's light spirit to guide your world toward peace and balance, pan up, end of book two. Book three ended tragically with Korra crying. Uh, how is book four going to end? Has to be a happy moment, I think, ultimately. So... For me, how you end uh, Korra is, you go to the title of the show, it's The Legend of Korra. Aang's journey was a very much personal one about him just becoming the Avatar. With Korra, it's about her becoming a legendary Avatar that has done something so important, done some s s stuff that's so important that she's become a legend. And to me, she, uh, her defeating Kavira and all of the stuff she's done before with the previous villains makes her that legend. And I think the way to show that is to have, maybe not all of the past lives, but have Aang and maybe Wan come in spirit form and like say something to her that she's become one of the best avatars ever or something like that. That they're now back with her and now she's proved herself to be an incredible avatar. Something like that. I think the past lives potentially have to be involved. Um, because I think it's going to be a little bit unsatisfying if they just have, um, if they just have something like K Korra has defeated Kuvira, close up on her face, you know, she's won the day, she's defeated the big villain, pan up in the, into the sky. Th I don't think that's enough for the finale, because you've already done that in kind of book one, um, as well as book two, so it has to be more impactful. If they ep if they have an epilogue that's a few months, possibly even a few years later. Um, I'd almost like that just to see like does it do any of the characters have like any kids at this point in time who does Korra get together with if she gets together with anyone I'd like to see that if it's a few years later and maybe that would also fit in well that a few years later Korra does um, get the past lives back because 
I'd almost actually really like that, that you see all of the characters, everyone except Korra, and then the final shot is just kind of Korra maybe in some place, and she's just got the past lives back, and she spent like a year or two finding them, and she's finally got them back, or something like that. That would be a cool shot um, to end it with. But other than that, it, it, I think it's very hard to predict what the final shot is actually going to be. Um, but yeah. Um, last thing I want to mention. Um, spirits. I think the spirits have to play a role in the finale. To me, it makes no sense if they're just not involved. To me, the scene in episode 10 with Korra talking to that dragon spirit. To me, that was setting up that the spirits were completely wrong. And that at some point they're going to realise that they have to be involved in this world if they want to live in this world and um, so um i i would like to see the spirits come back and be involved in the fight maybe they ultimately assist in the takedown of the colossus and that's their involvement in the final fight i would really like that i think that would be a cool thing to happen um uh because sorry cat is messing around again what are you doing loki stop Okay, you can be in the video too. Um, no, 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 that's that's the camera, Loki. You can't walk towards it. Sorry. No, stop. Stop, Loki. What are you doing? Sorry about this. Um, now I have hairs all over me, but okay. Um, <laughs> what on earth was I talking about? Spirits. Spirits. Uh, cat spirit. Um, I, I really hope that the spirits come back because I, I think it, it that ultimately is one of the moments that makes Korra a legend. If if she is the person that's able to make the spirits fight with the humans, for the humans, for a place that they both inhabit, that's one of the biggest things that any Avatar will have ever done. Has, that means that she's done something that no Avatar has ever managed to do before. Wan managed to befriend a few spirits, but ultimately couldn't bring them to peace. Aang again befriended a few spirits, but ultimately couldn't bring everyone back together. Korra has opened the portals and brought humans and spirits back together. And while they'll be able to live together, the spirits have kind of been much to themselves. They've been a little bit selfish. Maybe she's the one that's finally made them both able to help each other. And I think that would be a really cool moment to actually mention as the thing that ultimately makes Korra a legend that she did something so powerful and strong. Um, but uh, yeah, that's basically all my speculation. I know I didn't get too specific on what exactly is going to happen, but I think I, I focus on a lot of the key things. So in the comments, let me know what you think is gonna happen. I really want to know, but uh, yeah, that's been the video. Apologies for the cat getting in the way a lot, but um, I had to record this video now and I don't have time to record it again so apologies about that but yeah thanks for watching and bye.